Hey friends and welcome back to another garden tour. This garden tour is just going to be a little bit different. I have a few stories to tell you throughout this garden tour that is about things going on in my garden right now. So we're going to start with this going on behind me. As you can see, some of my sunflowers are down. Some of them are barely standing and are holding each other up. Some of them, like this one, have had their tops completely broken off. We had a massive storm come, in, come through almost a week ago now, right after our last garden tour. And it hailed and it stormed. And if that wasn't bad enough, the next day, we had another massive storm with 60 mile per hour winds and flash flooding conditions. And the garden took some damage. Now I have left some of these sunflowers up just hoping they're gonna be able to fix themselves. But after a week, some of them are still not standing up. The one that has its head broken, I will cut down today and feed to the rabbits because it's not growing anywhere. So as we go through our garden tour, you'll see different plants that have been broken, that's had limbs broken off, things like that. It is from the storm damage. And if you've seen my last vlog about the broken rabbit tractor, then you know there was another story that went on in that storm and it takes place with this umbrella behind me. So this is the umbrella I got for Mother's Day. And I love it. It provides so much shade for us to sit under. We can have lunches and stuff out here. It is wonderful. It's a great place to sit out in the garden and just relax when Declan plays around. I can drink some coffee or something and just hang out. That day, we had filmed our garden tour and the umbrella was up because I was using it as a shade block so I could talk to y'all throughout the garden tour. And that storm had come on so quick. I was outside doing animal chores when all of a sudden it pops up. I mean, I was in the middle of moving the goats. I had their fence like half down. And so winds are coming, trees are like going like this, like crazy. I was trying to get the goat pen finished up and I'm like hollering through these winds. Shut the front door. Cause we had it open for the screen door because we don't have AC. It's still not raining at this point, but the winds were crazy. Like I thought a tornado was on its way. So I knew rain was coming. And me being me, I finished getting the goats set up, get them taken care of. And I start running around to check the rabbit enclosures and stuff like that to make sure everybody is buckled down to weather a storm. Well, I checked out my rabbits. It's raining hard by this point. And I come out of, our rabbit tractors are over here in these woods, come out of there and my umbrella is still open. I come running up to the umbrella and grab the handle here to start closing it. Oh, yeah. There's water on the top. And as soon as I'm cranking it in to close it, a wind gust comes and takes the umbrella and I'm holding on to it and just takes it that way into the tomato trellis as I'm holding on to the umbrella and it like lifted me up off the ground it it was so scary and I landed on the ground up against the tomato trellis with the umbrella on me let me show you I'm not gonna show anything indecent this is after a week of healing I still have this massive bruise. This is where the umbrella ran into my leg. The pole actually jabbed into my thigh. Yeah, so that happened. That we're over here, the rest of our beefsteak tomatoes got demolished by me and the umbrella. The cattle panel is bent backwards. I don't know if y'all can tell that on here. I have random tomatoes that got thrown around the yard. It was crazy, guys. So, if you see broken things around my yard, plants and stuff that are still bent over, some of my corn is still down, it didn't rebound, stuff like that. That is what is going on. The storm really just hit the garden hard and some of it didn't rebound. So, I'm thankful it wasn't worse than it was. I'm thankful I wasn't more injured trying to close the umbrella than I was. It was a very scary night, but we all made it through safely and 
what more can you ask for than that? So we'll start up here in the garden. I just wanted to show you a few things and then we'll get into story number two that has to do with my tomatoes and goes along with Jess's story. If you've not seen her rant video, go watch it after this. So my arch trellis here, every week I show it to y'all, it is so much more green than it was the week before. We have bean pods that are starting to form along our vines and I am so excited for it. On this back side of this trellis, I've got my ground cherries here. Declan picks the yellow cherries, the ones that are ripe every single day. But I have some Beta Lux tomatoes and I don't know if y'all can see them behind the ground cherries along the cattle panel fencing. And I have some red ones that need to be picked. It's easiest to see them from this backside. So let's go ahead and harvest our tomato. Oh, the red one? Yeah, the red one. Is that about the pink one? That's the mm. red one. And the this one kind of split, but other than that, it looks wonderful. And put it in there. Oh, okay. hold on, baby. I don't want it to get squished. So, mama's gonna set them on the table. Okay. We got more over here, Declan's telling me. So, let's go get them. So, green ones? No, we're not, we're not getting the green ones, just the red ones, okay? Okay. I'm gonna eat them. I snack. Mama, cook them? Yeah. Or, I don't know what I'm gonna cook them in yet, but I'll cook them. And four more over there. We have some that are just starting to blush, but that's not bad. On this side of the cattle panel trellis, these are cucumbers. And we have already been picking off of these. These are Space Master cucumbers. And I mean, I pick them about this size. They make really, really good pickles. I've already got a jar of refrigerator pickles going. Let me find the cucumbers. Tell mommy if you see any, okay? Okay. Hmm. There's some little ones down here, but we're gonna let those get bigger, okay? okay? I'm not picking little ones right now. I still have lots of baby cukes on here. I mean, like little ones that are like this long or something. I could go ahead and get them and make them like gherkin pickles, but I would prefer just to let them get bigger. So I'll probably harvest them in another day or two. Um, oh. Our bean pods are coming on strong. And so I have a feeling in another two weeks or so, we will have this trellis super full and beans hanging down, which is what I am so excited to see. Okay, now we're gonna talk tomatoes and this is where story number two comes in. These tomatoes right here are San Marzano tomatoes and they are getting so full. I have so many tomatoes on every single bush in here. None of them are ready to pick yet. They're not red. The thing is, if y'all been following my garden vlogs, you know I've been having an issue with my tomatoes. These tomatoes and my Beta Lux tomatoes are about the only ones I have left that have survived so far. And I think it's because they're in this first row and they're kind of blocked by other things is what I'm thinking it is. Check out my Amish paste tomatoes. So my Amish paste tomatoes are all wilting. I had the same thing happen to my beefsteak tomatoes and they're all basically gone by now. So while I harvest more cucumbers off of this plant, let's talk about what's happening with my tomatoes. That's a big one. Okay, I'll get in just a second, buddy. Oh, that one is really big. Oh my goodness. Got a big old cucumber. So I have been talking to a friend of mine about what's going on with my tomatoes. And about the fact that we live near a bunch of farmers and how I've recently started smelling them spraying chemicals or 
I think I've recently just put two and two together that that's what's going on. It smells kind of like the lemon pine salt, so it's got a very citrusy but chemical note to it. Now we are surrounded by a lot of farmland, and the farmland closest to us, the one that I really, really notice spraying coming from, nobody lives there. It's just open fields, and that's what a lot of it is around us. I know somebody in the area owns most of these fields, but I'm not quite sure who it is, and I don't really know how to get in touch with them if I wanted to get into a war with my neighbors over them spraying their fields, which I can't stop them necessarily from doing because it's their field. However, I have been talking to a friend about it and I was encouraged after watching Jess's rant video where she got sprayed soil to do something. These tomatoes are not only something I'm documenting on YouTube and on Instagram and stuff, but they are food that I'm growing to put up to feed my family. They're money that I have put into it, time I have put into it to try to get them to this point for them all to all of a sudden start dying. So, I reached out to our local Clemson University Extension office. Here in South Carolina, the Clemson University Extension office really works hard on promoting home gardening, home canning, things like that. They teach different classes on how to preserve, how to use your food, how to decrease food waste, and you know, do refrigerator pickles and things like that. And they work really hard on trying to be a liaison between farmers and home growers and stuff like that so that we can all work together. So I reached out to the local home and garden extension officer and I told her what was going on, that I could smell them spraying and within two days of them spraying, I would have a massive death wave on my tomato plants. It started with the plants out in the open. My beef steaks are in the center aisle with nothing blocking them in the middle. It started in the center and it is working its way back. Every time they spray, I know a, notice a massive death wave. She said it sounds like herbicide drift from whatever they're spraying on their plants drifting over on the wind, especially since we can smell it. It is very strong. It gives me a headache. It makes me cough. We can smell it that strong over here. That is very likely what has taken out my tomatoes since tomatoes are very sensitive to things like that. So she told me to reach out to somebody else who is the liaison between the farmers and the home gardeners and he works with actually making sure that farmers follow the different laws and regulations for when they're spraying so that drift doesn't occur. I've reached out to this gentleman very many times and sent emails and everything. I have not received a response back. But at the moment, that is what it looks like we are dealing with with our tomatoes. If you've been following me on Instagram, and I, I think I shared a little clip about it on here about how I'm pruning my tomatoes with pruning the leaf stems and not the suckers, I really wanted to document that so that people could see the difference in how they're growing, and I'm not able to do that for y'all anymore. Um, just because at this point, I'm excited to have any tomatoes come into my house. I will have to really, really wash the ones that did, but I'm just excited to be able to have those because I'm not gonna have very much. I will have to buy in additional tomatoes this year to be able to can sauces and stuff, and that wasn't the plan. It was not the plan at all, but that's where we're at. A big one. You found a big one? Yeah. All right, don't step on the cucumber stems, okay? They're all over the ground, I know. Yeah, that's a good one. So basically at this point, I'm, I'm gonna have to look into where to get tomatoes either locally or Oh, that one's huge or where to buy canned tomatoes that I can turn into sauces and stuff like that because I still need a can and put stuff up for my family that is our goal our goal our journey is to self-sufficiency and I'm not gonna get there this year my plan was to save a lot of my seeds to be able to keep going I'm not gonna be able to do that this year I planted several different varieties to see which ones would really thrive in our environment and I still can't figure that out this year so that really really sucks and it's not fair but it's something we're gonna have to live with so if any of you whether no matter where you are in the country if you are experiencing drift issues from nearby farmers will you let me know how you're handling that is there something see that opening right there where you can see the barn in the distance that is the main opening between our property and their property everything else is pretty much grown up and my goal is to plant something there to completely grow this up and close it off. Um, this is an abandoned 
building there. I'm not even sure who owns this property. It's just a small section. And the farms are right on the other side of that building. They're that close to us. Probably, probably not even 250 feet from our property line to the farm. Or to the field, I should say, because nobody lives there. To where they're spraying. We'll just put it that way. So it's that close. But if you know of anything I can grow that can effectively shield that. I do have berry bushes growing along the back. They're not doing great but my goal is to be able to trellis them up to keep shielding that up that was my goal anyways just to be able to block that line of sight there even though nobody lives there someday somebody may if you know what can grow there that will block most of that drift stuff from coming over yeah, i know it's still gonna come i know um i don't know what i'm gonna do about planting tomatoes next year i know it's still gonna come i'm hoping to keep working with the clemson office to get it mitigated so that we can figure out a way to live happily together. I'm not out here to start trouble for my neighbors or the neighbor farms. I don't agree with spraying, but that's their business and that's that's what they do to each their own, right? But what they're doing is affecting our home and that's the difference. So I've really got to come up with some way that I can grow something quick and fast that'll be up before next garden season to hopefully block as much of that drift as possible and I've got to figure out a different place to plant my tomatoes next year so that I get at least some of a harvest. I don't know. It's going to be a long process, but I've got to figure it out and I've got to work through it. Our banana peppers are really starting to come in good now. I'm so excited. Yeah, it's a yellow one. Oh, yep, no bug damage. Go ahead and eat. Yeah. So, four banana peppers added to our harvest today. I want y'all to see these squash. I don't think they're ready. I think they're supposed to be yellow, but I still have squash. Look at that! It's my first squash I've ever grown. I'm so excited. It's so pretty. I've got a baby one there and a baby one there how exciting is that my hot pepper bed i haven't really noticed many peppers coming on yet i had blooms oh i still have blooms on this one but no peppers really oh this one has peppers but it needs to be tied up evidently look at these peppers love it Oh, those. It looks like those are cayennes. I'll have to come back and tie that up as soon as we're done with this video. Oh, and I've got jalapenos coming in. Look, jalapenos. Oh, there's some more jalapenos. Oh, that's a yellow one. Yep, that's a yellow one. Somebody's got to have his ground cherry fill. Oh, Bugs got that one, buddy. My okra is still growing. It's not very tall as of yet, still. No blossoms yet, but it's growing, so for that I am thankful. More okra. My watermelon is growing, and it's got its own little blossom, so hopefully I'll get watermelons out of the deal. That's a yellow one. Yep, that one's a yellow one. Who knew gardening could teach the little kid their colors? Oh yeah, that's good to eat. Go for it, bud. My zucchini plants are beautiful. I've had to cut some of them back. They got a little storm damaged, but I don't see any zucchinis coming on yet. But I do have blossoms. My corn looks to have mostly all stood itself back up. I see one or two that are still down. But it looks much, much better at standing up. And I'm so, so thankful for that. You can see the beans That's growing beautiful. up in it. My pumpkins have sprouted. They are looking beautiful. Okay, friends. Well, my camera died before I got to finish my garden tour. So it's a little later in the day. But we're going to keep going. However, I did want to share some news with y'all. In between the time of me waiting on my camera to have battery to come back out. I did get an email back from the Clemson uh, University Extension Officer. He's going to come out to our property next week to see my tomatoes and to test them or something to find out for sure if it is herbicide drift from our neighbors. I want to show you what it looks like now. 
I'm obviously leaving them in the ground until he comes out and does all of his stuff. But these are my beefsteak tomatoes. You can see how they have just dried up and wilted like something awful. These are my Amish paste tomatoes. This one's just getting started. So this is how they start out. They just start curling in on themselves and the leaves are drying out. They still have fruit. All the plants still have fruit. Then they progress. You can see we still have fruit. But this one so far has been spared. I think I'm assuming because it's all the way at the front. That's the only thing I can think of. But you can see what is that? how the leaves are curling in and they just become deformed. They just curl up and die. They're already feeling crispy at this point and they're still green. But I am glad that he emailed me back during the time I've been filming this garden tour so y'all can kind of get an update about what's going on there. This one's already super progressed. These were alive in the last garden tour. This has all happened in a week. They have, the soil is moist. I don't know. I'm hoping he can give us an answer. We can see what's going on. As far as my beans back here, these are still beautiful and green. As you can see, these are blocked by the trees here. So I'm assuming that's helped some. These have not set any kind of fruit. They haven't flowered. They haven't nothing. These are again beautiful. These are flowering. And they are again blocked by the trees here. I have high hopes I will get beans out of these. Now these are bush beans. That's why there's no trellis. <gasps> this one's got a bean, y'all. That's my first bean. I'm so excited. Yo, it has beans. These have beans. I am so shocked. These plants have not done good at all. But they have beans. Look. I have beans. I have beans. Yo, I am so incredibly excited. I didn't think I was going to get anything from these beans. Because they're not growing. They're so small. So stunted. They're not... They're not even a foot tall. Like these things are small. I know they're bush beans, but they are small. They're just stunted, but they're they're producing beans. I am so stinking excited. Now I gotta look up and see if they're dry beans or beans we can eat fresh or what they are, and I don't know. But we're gonna do it. They're gonna have to be washed fairly well. I know I'm gonna get comments on eating beans that possibly are sprayed with herbicide but y'all if i was to be buying these at the store i don't know if they're sprayed with herbicide or not um so at least here i somewhat know what's going on with them and i can make sure they are cleaned really really well and feed them to my family so while it is not the ideal solution it's it is a solution i'm still gonna eat them i'm still gonna feed them to my family because like i said even if they do have herbicide drift on them that I'm going to try and wash off, it's still going to be better than what I would be buying at Walmart uh, when I buy beans. So, I mean, it's not what I want, obviously. We don't spray our plants. We grow very organically. But organically is not a hill I will die on. It is something I prefer. And if I have the option of going organic or non-organic, I will choose organic as long as it's not crazy ridiculous in price. Um, some people are very, very proud of their organic produce and I just don't have the budget to provide for them to be that proud of it. So while I won't consider my green beans and stuff in this garden to be organic because of the possible herbicide drift coming over, it is still better in my opinion than something I would buy at the grocery store that I don't know what's been on that plant. I don't know where it's been. I don't know how far away it's traveled, that sort of thing. So if these are fresh eating beans, I will pick them and I will cook them for dinner tonight. I just gotta look up and see what they are. I'll be right back. Okay, so these here, these two rows are Jacob's cattle beans. How do you say the Sally cattle beans? Jacob's cattle beans. 
What is that? Hold on, let's open it. Yeah. Now these, if you dry them, are a kidney bean. But, oh yeah, we can still eat these fresh. Oh yeah, the beans are still teeny tiny in them, so we can still eat these fresh. Once these get bigger, and I let I will let some dry on the vine, then I will save those as dried beans. No, that one's too small. We gotta. Huh? We need to let it get bigger, okay? Okay. Yeah. Okay. No, no, no. We gotta wash it first. Okay. Put it in Mama's apron. Okay. Now these up here are my provider beans, and I didn't get very many of these to germinate at all. Like it was, it was bad. Okay, well, never mind. The provider ones are still way, way too small to even harvest anyway, so I wouldn't be able to taste them if I wanted to. No, I'm just looking. Okay, I think we got all the big ones. All right, here, bud, put it in mommy's apron. Huh? Put your, no, not that, your bean. Okay. There we go. Y'all. That's a good amount of beans. That's awesome. I can't believe this whole time I've been discounting my beans and they've been producing over here. I am thrilled. Now I really need to go look through these other beans just to make sure I didn't miss anything over there. They're just so small, like, what? They're tiny. And they just produce a ton of beans. Our squashes, zucchini, and cucumbers that I planted in these two beds are all starting to come up and get green. They're not very big yet, but they're getting there. Hopefully I'll get some good germination for them and some good food from them. I'm hoping, anyways, I'm excited. All right guys, this is my first garden tour where I had an actually pretty decent harvest going on. I have them all piled up on the table and I can't wait to show you the finished total. I am blown away by what I harvested out of this garden today, y'all. Maybe by next week's garden tour video, the Clemson officer will have come out. I actually don't know what his actual title is. I don't know why I keep calling him an officer. But the person who works in the office there will have been able to come out and look at my tomatoes and let us know for sure if it is herbicide drift or if what they're spraying over there is no harm or what it is. He's going to try to contact them, see what he can figure out, what they're spraying and if it's affecting us or not. So I look forward to updating y'all on that and to find out what it is, what we can do to fix it, if it's even herbicide or if there's something funky going on with my tomatoes. Y'all have seen what they are doing throughout these different processes. It is, it's crazy. It is crazy. But I told him I wouldn't pull any tomatoes till he can come out here, look at them in person, see the different stages of death they are in and see what he thinks they are, if it's herbicide, drift, or not. I will let y'all know what he says, hopefully in the next garden tour video. So if you're wanting to stay up to date with that, make sure you are subscribed to our channel so you don't miss out on that next video to find out what he says and what happened. Let's see our total harvest. All right, friends, here is our total harvest. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cucumbers, four banana peppers, nine tomatoes, these are Beta Lux tomatoes, so they are on the smaller side. This is about as big as they get, but they get fairly small as well. What are those? What are those? Cucumbers. Cucumbers. Small cucumbers. And then these are our beans that we just harvested and we are gonna wash up and cook for dinner. Mm. All right, you ready to take our food in and start cooking dinner? Yeah. Okay. All right, let's put them back in mommy's apron. Wow, my apron is full and I don't even have the tomatoes in it. Oh, what is that? Ain't it a lot? Yeah. Y'all, this is so exciting. I am so thrilled. This is our first year gardening here in this location. It's my first in-ground garden. In the past, I've gardened in containers. I don't expect big harvests until at least year three because I really need to work on our soil and improving it and improving my knowledge as a gardener. So to get this large of a harvest all at once, I am blown away. If you do not have a garden yet, try containers. That's where I started. It is a great, fantastic way to start and to start learning garden. I'm just so excited. I don't know if y'all can tell, but I'm just so excited. That's all I have for you today, friends. So. Until next time, okay. bye. We will see you 
Later.